My name is Catherine F. Hoxie. I am a singer, songwriter, and children's book author, uh, among many other things. Uh, wow. So, I think that I had a little bit too much exposure to sex really young. Um, my mom was mentally, is mentally ill and used to watch really inappropriate things in front of me and um, I think that as a result like I became uncomfortable with things that felt sexy to me or look sexy to me um, so I'm trying to, to figure out what used to make me uncomfortable because that's what I would have considered sexy um, but I definitely think growing up in a household full of like really curvaceous women um, and initially being like really afraid of that part of myself. Um, it's interesting to see how far I've come from my original perception of that being like not necessarily a good thing to being, to like fully embracing it. Um, a sexy woman. Yeah, I think that I, I, I don't know because I think that I was really afraid of it growing up. Um, I didn't really know that about myself until you just asked me that question. Someone who's comfortable in their own skin. Um, I don't think that it's a look necessarily, oftentimes it's a feeling. Um, so I think that in my evolution as a woman, I've started to see, um, the reflection of me and other people and really identifying that as being beautiful. I don't know necessarily sexy, but beautiful. Um, and I think probably some of my stigma of that sexy versus beautiful thing comes from what I was just talking about, which is interesting. I guess my definition of a successful woman um, was more placed on individuals and not just a general idea so kind of the opposite of sexy um, success I had actual landmarks and, and people to look at that I thought were successful um, but it was always tied to people who were effectively creating change whether it was in their lives or the lives of others those were always the people that I saw as the most successful My definition of success has definitely changed, mainly because as an artist I have had to really unlearn a lot of my preconceived notions of what success means in order to be able to truly celebrate my success um, because I'm super critical of myself and a perfectionist and nothing ever seems to be really good enough, so success is a moving target for me. Mm -hmm. and. You know, that can be really challenging at times because I've come to this conclusion that life is a matter of knowing that you are enough while always striving for more. And at that rate, success, like I said, it's just a moving target. So I've, I think that I found it more challenging as I have gotten older to really identify my success and really give myself credit for any level of success that I achieve because I'm still not where I want to be. So, yeah. Yes. Right. I definitely consider success and sexy two different entities. There, I, I think how you do one thing is how you do all things and I have a tendency to compartmentalize everything so there's very few things probably in my landscape that I think, think that can coexist mm. <laughs> <laughs> lately I think that that's been like really on my mind um, as an artist especially you know someone out in, in the music industry and this perception of like you know you generally the, the look is thin, the look is young, the look is 
whatever. And, and so I feel myself getting further away from this perceived notion of what I'm supposed to be if I'm going to make it in music. And I have to remind myself that I'm not going to be successful in music because of the way I look. I'm going to be successful because of my sound and because of my words and because of my energy. And that's a, another notion that I'm working really hard to unlearn mm -hmm. um, and stop taking on what other people think, you know, success looks like, sexy looks like, all of this, like letting go of everyone else's perception and finding what works for me and really celebrating that and, and not putting these you know, these postmarks everywhere of like, well, I'm not here, so I don't look like this, so I'm not pretty, or I, I don't have this, so I'm not successful, or I, like, it's just the comparisons. Comparison is literally just robs you of your authenticity and your ability to recognize your, your worth and your success, honestly, when it comes down to it. Amen. <laughs> um, so, okay, so being sexy and successful, what are some challenges that I have faced as a result of being both of those things? Um, well, when you're successful, in the eyes of others, not even yourself, um, in the eyes of others, it, it can evoke feelings in others that perhaps you're a threat and cause people to distance themselves from you and support that you once received is no longer there because people, you know, like I said, feel like you're more of a threat or feel like you think that you're better than them, but what they fail to realize is they're the ones thinking that. Like that's coming from your brain, not mine, so. Um, but then, yeah, also I would say men, in terms of being sexy, like I just want to make music and I just, want to be around people who want to make music, who believe in what I'm doing and believe in what they're doing and want to create some synergy and not sexually, like just because we have a, an artistic or spiritual connection does not mean I want to have sex with you. And it's been really challenging to find people that don't at, after some point broach the subject of, of being intimate as opposed to just being professional. Um, and that's been really frustrating because I just want to make music. And to be 100% honest, at this current time, I'm actually abstinent. And so it's interesting when you don't have something in your space and people present all these invitations for different things. And it really kind of tells you who is who. And it also, um, is a little disheartening at times because you wonder if people are even working with you at all, if they even are listening to your music or if that's just, they're just being, they're just patiently waiting. This past year I started doing self-discovery life mastery and it started with just um, something called present moment awareness and just in the first time doing PMA I was, I felt like I was like lifted out of myself a little bit. Um, you don't realize how unaware and how distant we are to the present moment until you start to get present and really um, get real about it. And so over the last year I've attended a number of workshops. I'm going back in May for the boot camp, but it's the techniques have all really taught me to how to genuinely and authentically step into my power and let go of all of the limiting beliefs that have been holding me back for a really long time. A lot of thought patterns and, you know, your mind's like it's just a little puppy dog that's constantly running. And until you can take command of it, you're kind of at the creation of life instead of being the creator. Um, so I've just learned that in a, in a real way, that I am the creator of my universe, I am the master of my universe, and everything that's in my space is what I've created. So becoming more accountable and um, in, in doing so, creating my ideal situation, because if I have that much power, why am I not creating something that I want to be part of instead of some of the stuff that I've been creating <laughs> for a long time. So, But I would say those, those two practices have been an integral part of 
my music for sure.